Alright, good morning. Um, I haven't shot a video in a while, so uh, I figured I'd shoot one today. Today I'm going with the Cal Poly Amateur Radio Club to help the Cal Poly Triathlon Club um, coordinate race logistics and in addition to bringing my ham radio equipment along and helping them coordinate the race, I thought I would also take the opportunity to shoot a bit on my Fujifilm XC3. Um, it's, I'm going to be stationed at a point where there's primarily bikes, I believe, and so it should be pretty straightforward, but um, if I find any settings or anything that work good, I will let you guys know. But it's just a chill Sunday morning. It's 5.42, and I don't think I've woken this awake. Okay, so it's been a couple days since I shot the triathlon and I've had a chance to go through about the 4,000 pictures that I shot and I just wanted to go over the some comparisons in terms of ergonomics compared to a DSLR, autofocus settings that I used, performance, and other observations that I had. So lessons learned on my end when using the X-T3 as a sports photography camera. So spoiler, if you're wondering whether or not it can be a sports photography camera, it does really well, um, but there are just some settings that you need to look out for, so that's what this video will be about. All right, so first, ergonomics. I have the X-T3 right here. I have the vertical uh, battery grip with me, and um, I really like the vertical part of this grip. This is it's very deep. Um, it's really easy to hold. I wasn't using any straps. I was just hand holding it. That way I could easily transition over to a portrait or a landscape orientation. Um, I was shooting this for basketball a while ago and that had me uh, sitting on the floor uh, near one of the baskets and I did notice after shooting there isn't as deep of a grip for the landscape like traditional orientation way of holding it as there is on say a Nikon D90, D7000. Any, any, these are just the old cameras that I have on hand, but the grip isn't as deep. Um, and so that was something that I missed um, in shooting sports is the deeper grip on compared to a DSLR. And that's why I think you definitely should get, if you're shooting for long periods of time, like a couple hours or more, uh, definitely get the battery grip. It helps with balancing the longer lenses and it also makes a deeper grip so that your hands don't have to kind of curl around. What I noticed in shooting, in shooting this without the battery grip or in shooting the X-T20, what happens is you, instead of holding it like with your hands like straight on like this, um, what I found is I, I end up curling like this, so they kind of curl up a little bit, and uh, that's cool. Like it, it's a light camera, so you can do that. But for longer periods of time, when shooting sports, it isn't really comfortable. Also, the shutter touch. So the D ninety isn't a good example of this, but on like the D seven thousand and other pro level bodies, they have a really soft uh, or a soft shutter button. It's, uh, it isn't like stepped in terms of the amount of force that's required to trigger it. Um, but on the Fuji X-T3, um, the button um, definitely stops when you're focusing and it, and it has a hard press down. Um, the Fuji X-H1 has a different response, which I've heard is more soft, maybe more similar to like the D7000, which I can relate to. But even despite having like distinct uh, press down points. I noticed that maybe because it's a mirrorless camera, maybe just because it's a, it's not like a crazy pro camera like the Sony A9 or A1 or Nikon Z9. 
uh, it's hard to control how many frames it takes. On the Nikon D7000, I knew exactly how many frames I would get um, from holding it down, but I found on this, uh, when you let go, it might take a couple more frames, especially when it's firing off at 11 frames per second, which is the max burst rate using the mechanical shutter. That's just something that I found. It may be because it's also just shooting way faster, so it's harder for me to time it exactly, but I still found that it, it does shoot a couple more frames. No problem if you can just go afterwards and post, it just might mean that you have a couple hundred more photos to go through, but uh, it does shoot quite fast, which is really cool. Second thing, in shooting with a uh, mirrorless camera, instead of having a, a mirror, obviously, and you have like a, it reflects the light and that's what you see in the viewfinder. On here, it, you're looking at an electric viewfinder, so you're looking at a screen. And one thing that I found more so when doing basketball is I like having both eyes open. So when I'm shooting, I like have both eyes open. That way I could see the, obviously what the camera sees and also have like a wider field of view for situational awareness in case a ball, like, you know, they shoot it up and maybe it, it might come towards you or something like that. And, and just, just in terms of framing, um, that was something that I found myself doing on when I was shooting DSLR and coming over to mirrorless, I found that slightly harder to do. Um, I feel like it's something to do with maybe like the relative brightness levels of the electric viewfinder versus uh, my eye. So maybe like the EVF is so bright that my brain just thinks, oh, this is like the main thing you should be looking at and kind of shuts off the other eye. I'm not sure. I'm not a um, optical doctor or anything like that, but that was just something that I observed, it was a little bit harder. I could, I could still do it and I can also adjust the brightness levels of the EVF, but I was shooting in bright daylight, so I liked having the bright viewfinder. Moving on to the autofocus settings. So when I started off, I was using um, continuous autofocus. So that's just the switch up here, switch to C for continuous autofocus. And then there are, if you go into the menus, there's um, AF custom setting um, and originally I had it set to one the custom setting one which is um, multi-purpose and I found that it wasn't following the biker uh, as it was coming towards me and so I was stationed on the side of the road it was basically just coming straight towards the camera not really moving around in the plane too much um, and it wasn't, it wasn't falling fast enough. And so I changed that to setting number three and you notice it says tracking sensitivity two. So that's kind of in the middle in terms of how long it waits to uh, refocus on a subject that may have crossed the frame. And then in terms of speed tracking sensitivity, that's set to two. And so that means it's more likely to follow a subject or just in terms of the tracking speed it'll maybe sample at a greater rate as it's coming towards you and zone area switching it was also auto in mode one but that basically if you're shooting in zone i believe if it's in front then if there's something that happens maybe at the bottom of the zone if you can imagine a little grid if it happens at the bottom of the zone if it's set to front then it'll refocus on whatever pass through maybe the bottom of the frame or in the foreground relative to what it was originally tracking. As opposed to center, um, it keeps the originally focused on subject, uh, which is in the center of the zone and doesn't, um, doesn't focus on anything that might have come in front of it. In terms of autofocus modes, now um, there's different modes. There's tracking, there's zone, there's single point. In my experience, single point was actually the worst. I found it ended up chasing the background a bit more. Like it didn't really have a sense of what was closer and what was further away. Um, but zone generally did a better job with that. And I think, um, yeah, zone did pretty well. And then also tracking. If I'm following a subject on the left side of the frame, I set, I acquire tracking and uh, it'll follow it all the way across the frame. And the really nice thing about mirrorless is that it has sensors, phase detection sensors, at least on the X-T3, that go across the entire frame. 
And so with tracking, it can follow across the entire frame. And that was really neat. I found if I didn't give it a good uh, kind of contrasty subject to start with though for the tracking point, it could end up chasing the background. And so there are a couple photos where I noticed this happening, which was a bummer because uh, I was, it was, I felt like the subject was kind of in the middle of the frame. Like I could have used zone, but I wanted to try out tracking and it didn't quite follow it across a background that was kind of changing. But uh, generally speaking, tracking was very good. Um, but um, if I, uh, tracking was good for the creative shots, but for general use, I would probably use the nine point zone area mode for uh, continuous focus. Now, moving on to performance. What I want to talk about here is back button focusing. If you don't know what back button focusing is, it's basically where instead of using the shutter button and pressing it halfway to tell the camera to acquire focus, you assign one of the back buttons like the AFAEL lock um, to focus, to tell your camera to focus. And this is useful in sports because then you can just uh, focus, focus, focus. And when you want to take a picture, you just slam your finger down on the shutter and it'll take a photo. What I found with the triathlon was I would try to track bicyclists coming towards the camera and say there's like three of them. I would try to follow the first one. So holding down backward focus, it would be continuously auto-focusing on the, on the first biker and then releasing the button and pressing it again to follow the second one and releasing it and pressing it again to follow the third. I found there was a pretty good delay that I'd never really quite got used to when I was using the XC3. I felt like when I was using the Nikon D7000, I knew what the delay was gonna be and it seemed like it was shorter than what I experienced with the XC3. And so it basically made shots uh, easier to track and follow and track and follow for uh, consecutive uh, runners. I'm sure pro level cameras, once again, they would have the advantage and be able to track it uh, quickly enough. But with the X-T3 kind of trying to stress it to its limits, uh, this is definitely where it showed signs that it was kind of falling behind in its ability to quickly reacquire focus using back button focus. Or if you even didn't use back button focus and use the top button instead, I don't think it would have made a difference because it's still having to just reacquire a subject as it's coming towards the camera. Um, wasn't exactly the X-T3 strong suit, but then again, uh, you know the limitations, you can deal with it, and that's what I did with this. Now, in terms of reasons for missed shots, I had quite a few missed shots, and this was the first time I was actually using this camera to shoot a triathlon. And so some things I learned was not using a fast enough shutter speed. I was around one over 320, um, so like the hundredths of a second, and I found that that was too slow. Um, often I would, even if I was tracking the subject, so tracking the subject, so the subject wasn't, the bicyclist wasn't really moving in the frame, um, I get background blur, which is okay because you're tracking the subject, but sometimes if I wasn't tracking it exactly on, I, the subject would be blurry as well. And so that's obviously something that you want to avoid, and I could have avoided that by shooting at a higher ISO and allowing my shutter speed to be increased as well. And so that's just something that I'll keep in mind. Maybe try the thousandths instead of the low hundredths, hundredths of a second. Second mistake was, as I mentioned before, using the wrong uh, AFC custom mode, changing that to setting number three. Um, that helped um, to get more shots in focus. And lastly, zooming while taking photos. I don't know why I didn't really realize this as much of a problem when I was shooting DSLR, maybe because I wasn't really attuned to it, but I felt like the mirrorless cameras definitely struggle when you uh, are focusing even in continuous mode and you're adjusting the zoom of the zoom lens. I found like that really kind of knocked it off in a couple circumstances. And the lens that I'm using is the Fuji 55 to 200. So maybe that has something to do with it. They have other telephoto zooms 
uh, with different kind of autofocusing motors and different apertures, which may make it easier for the camera to focus and deal with changes in zoom. But this lens uh, really struggled with it. And I noticed on the 18 to 55 as well, you can't really, you can't really zoom and focus at the same time. It just kind of knocks it out of focus which uh, may be due to the lens, how the lens is manufactured and how all the elements are lined up just causes it to be out of focus uh, when you zoom it. But that was just something that I noticed. So to recap, did the Fuji X-T3 perform? I would say yes, it did. You have to be aware of the limitations presented by the system. So going back to talking about back button focusing, making sure that you're familiar with the different um, AFC, so continuous autofocus custom modes, making sure that you have it in the right mode for the particular sport that you're trying to capture, and then also using the right autofocus area mode, which I found to be the nine point zone was the most effective or easiest to work with in my experience. Tracking was really good. Like the box, it would track it solid across the entire frame. That's one of the pros of using a mirrorless camera, at least a mirrorless camera like the X-T3 is having those phase detect autofocus portions, which allows you to follow a subject across the entire frame. And combined with tracking, that's really neat. It allows you to really just focus on composition, not have to worry about moving your autofocus point around or tracking it too much as it travels across the frame but again i had to worry about physically tracking it um, because of the shutter speed that i was using and the effect that i was trying to get ergonomically there are those differences as well definitely get the battery grip if you're thinking about shooting sports i used about one and a half batteries shooting for three hours taking about four thousand shots um, on the X-T3. So having the battery grip, um, definitely. I like shooting with it anyway, but having the extended battery life is really nice. And I was shooting in boost mode, which kind of uses more power as well, um, but is supposed to make the system more responsive, which it definitely does. But uh, overall, the X-T3 definitely got me a lot of shots. It shot at a pretty high frame rate, so that meant I had probably about the same hit rate or amount of good photos and bad photos as I did on a DSLR. It's been a while though, so take that with a grain of salt. But the ergonomics kind of had me wanting to go back to a DSLR and shooting that for sports uh, just to see how comfortable it was. When I was shooting with the D7000, I did have the battery grip and that was something that I really liked. And the Fujifilm X-T3, the battery grip extends the main grip as well which is really nice if i was shooting without it it would have been slightly more painful especially not having a monopod or anything like that when i was hand holding everything um, the grip really makes a big difference so if you're considering the fujifilm xc3 for photography maybe you're looking to upgrade um, it is a slightly older camera now it's still running the same autofocusing algorithm as the new X-T4 or the released a couple years ago X-T4. Um, so it's, it's Fujifilm's best at the moment. It can, you can make it work for sports, obviously, if you want the ergonomics or like the viewfinder experience of using a DSLR, you can check out DSLRs. Um, go check it out in person if you can and see which one you like. Maybe look at the eye, having both the eyes open. A uh, whole situation that I noticed earlier with the DSLR and the mirrorless cameras. But besides that, it really doesn't, gear doesn't matter too much. As I noted in this video, okay, I guess it does matter a little bit, but there's a lot of things that um, I still need to work on even shooting with the X-T3 in terms of my technique and my understanding of the proper shutter speed for different sports. And so just by shooting on whatever camera you have right now, uh, you can improve, um, you can get, improve the amount of good shots that you get uh, when you're shooting sports, if that's what you're interested in or really whatever, uh, just keep on taking your camera out and shooting with it as much as you can and you'll really get to know the system well 
and your photography will improve as well. So I hope that you found this video helpful and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.